Okay, folks, welcome back. All right, this lesson is going to be on Forex cross currency relationships and higher time frame institutional order flow. Now, this is going to be an example of precision price action theory. It's not a one video answers all questions. It relies on you having gone through a lot of the lessons that are taught on this YouTube channel. All right, cross currency relationships and higher time frame institutional order flow. What are we going to talk about? Well, I'm going to unravel a mystery of cross pairs. And I'm going to show you how to determine which pair leads, how to determine which pair stalls, how to use this insight in order flow, and find explosive price swings as a result. How do we do that? Well, it starts with the economic calendar. All right, so let's zoom in here and take a quick look at what this particular week is. Now, the time of this recording is Tuesday. The calendar week would be September 7th, 2020 to September 11th, 2020. You can clearly see in the U.S. on Monday, we had bank holidays for the U.S. and Canada. Looking through the calendar, the only thing we have for Euro appears on Thursday. So we have Thursday's economic calendar having a large high impact event and nothing going on the cable front. Nothing really to speak of. So the only economic driver we have for Euro is on Thursday and it's high impact and nothing on cable. So if we are looking for explosive price action moves, that means that Euro is likely to be stunted, okay? In other words, held back because it's waiting on a big impact news driver on Thursday. And Cable has nothing, so it's allowed to trade however it wants to trade. Euro has to wait for some impact news that comes out later in the week. So right away, there's your clue that Euro is likely to be held in consolidation and later in the week allowed to be more explosive. Okay, not to mean that it will be an explosive price action move. It just means that using this idea helps you focus on which pair will be strangled, okay, or held in consolidation, whereas the other pair, cable, which is not being seen at all in the economic calendar at all, that implies that it will be allowed to trade more freely and less manipulation. And the manipulation will be where? In euro. So let's go over to the charts and I'll give you a little bit more insights on this and how we can flesh it out and give it a little bit more process oriented approach. Okay folks, we are looking at the euro pound on the right and the dollar index or Dixie on the left. So now when we look at price action and we're comparing the dollar index as a barometer, if we're looking for higher prices on dollar, we would be reasonably expecting lower prices in foreign currency. And if the dollar were expected to go lower, we would expect to see bullish prices or higher prices on foreign currency. Now, there isn't a simple always follow this procedure and you'll get the big price action moves. You'll, you have to look at some other things. And that's kind of like what we're going to talk about a little bit tonight. And it's the crosses. So... The relationship between crosses, now obviously there's a cross between dollar and euro, and then we have that as the euro dollar. But when I say crosses, I'm referring to foreign currencies crossed with another foreign currency, not that of the dollar index. Okay, so that way we understand each other going forward. We're going to assume for the moment that we have been bullish on the dollar index, okay, for the sake of discussion. Um, my students know we were and have been now for a period of about a week or so bullish on dollar. Now, if you look at the relationship between the dollar index daily and the euro pound daily, they both from September beginning have seen a price rally higher. Now, in the simplest of determining bullish or bearish, if I'm expecting the dollar to go higher, then I'm looking for shorts on foreign currency. Now, there's a big jump from bullish dollar 
to going short all foreign currency. There's a step in the middle we have to refer to. Now, again, it, my students are familiar with my fa favorite pet pairs, that being the euro dollar and cable or pound dollar. Now, I have traded other currency pairs, and I can trade other currency pairs, but I prefer to use these two, as you'll see why tonight, because it's really easy to see which one is going to lead, which one's going to fall behind. And the only way you're going to be able to get that information clearly is to use the euro pound. Now, the euro pound is a currency pair that a lot of people just are focused on this pair as well, it makes the most money per pip. It's this and it's that. And I never really trade this pair. And if you're new to my channel, it probably is very shocking. <laughs> I never trade it. I use it as a selection tool. And I'll show you what I mean by that tonight. Uh, if you've been going through my videos, you've probably seen lessons or discussions about this. But I want to give a little bit more meat to it tonight. So that way you get something out of it and more value to your support of the YouTube channel. So again, we're going to go in assuming that we have been bullish on dollar. Now, how you arrive at bullish dollar, you can get that information from studying the concepts and tutorials on this YouTube channel. This is not a silver bullet video. It doesn't answer all questions. It's specific, highly focused on one part, one segment of the process that leads to finding explosive price action moves okay so now when we look at euro and contrast that with the dollar now if we're expecting a large price move you can expect the dollar to be moving in tandem with a cross like euro pound if it does that if it's starting to move in the same direction that is highly indicative of a huge imbalance between otherwise closely correlated pairs. Now that's a mouthful I know, but what I'm saying is if the dollar's going higher, but not all foreign currencies will rally or decline the same. So if the dollar is bullish, this is how I start all my analysis and now I teach my students, we start with the dollar. So if that's the case and we're bullish on dollar, then we have to determine which foreign currency is more likely to go lower. So what we're doing is we're using relative strength analysis to find out which currency is likely to stall and which currency is likely to go lower. If we can determine that and ferret that solution out by studying price action in euro pound and using the economic calendar as I mentioned before going to the charts, we have a a very strong likelihood okay or probability that we'll find the right pair to trade now do i always get it right no you're going to get it wrong too but over a large you know sample size and career in trading you're going to find that this concept this technique will help you find these really big explosive price action moves all right so Again, I'm not trying to draw your attention to or sell the idea that this euro pound move is the discussion. That euro pound move is the catalyst to determine which currency pair to trade, whether it be euro dollar or pound dollar. Okay, so let's go into a little bit more detail. The dollar traded down into its fair value gap, as I mentioned in the previous discussions, and I challenged everyone that was in my mentorship if I was lying about you know expecting these levels to be traded to while well, way back over here even before that uh, that there would be a large number of thumbs down <laughs> you can see there wasn't a large number of thumbs down so if we expect price to trade higher okay you can clearly see we have relative equal highs in here so it's not a stretch to imagine that it could reach up to that point. Now, we're going to stop and just say that is all there is for our analysis. Okay, say that was all that was possible at your level of understanding. Okay, and from trading down in here up to here, great. That's wonderful. You had a bias. The bias is bullish dollar. All foreign currency should go lower. But we have to use the step between just simply dollar going higher 
all foreign currency going lower, we want to look for the weakest of the two currencies in closely correlated pairs. Because if you look at all foreign currency, they should be declining over the last few days. But not all of them fell as much as others. There were other currencies that were extremely weak and they led the downside draft on delivery on price versus the upside on the dollar index. So if we look at the relationships between euro versus pound, we start with the euro pound cross. So what causes the euro pound to rally higher? Well, there's only two instances that will cause that. Euro dollar goes up while at the same time pound dollar consolidates. That means euro dollar is allowed to go higher, trade higher, and pound dollar or cable stays in a range. Now, it doesn't have to be a very clear range. It could be a muddy, choppy trading session or sessions in plural. Or euro dollar consolidates and pound dollar drops. The same thing would be seen in this chart with euro pound going higher, regardless of which scenario over here is true. Now, as I shown on the economic calendar, the euro dollar has strong economic news coming out. So no real indication that cable has any news this week at all. So which pair is going to be likely to wait around for the big news for the for the trading week. It's euro. Pound doesn't have anything really allowed to inject volatility and it's a high impact news event. And after that, there's nothing cable related either or pound related. So the probabilities are euro dollar will likely be held in consolidation until it's big news event for the week. That's why I teach my students to use the economic calendar and how you plug that little component into the entire process. So we look for euro dollar to consolidate because of the economic calendar. So if the economic calendar hints at it's likely to consolidate, then what does that imply if we are also bullish on euro pound? The scenario is going to be euro dollar consolidates and pound dollar drops. So right away, we can clearly see that there's an advantage to not trading short euro, not going long euro, but selling short pound dollar. So now if we take a look at euro versus the dollar. All right, so here's the euro dollar daily chart. And you can see we are in a rather large consolidation on euro. And my students know that this whole entire time we have been really reluctant to have large intermediate term analysis calls on this pair at, after where we've traded to here. I wanted 120, we got 120, and now we've been sitting on our hands for euro. Couple that with what I'm showing you here tonight, it leads very well into shorts on cable. And you'll be able to see some of the things I've actually taught on this YouTube channel, how they fall into place just perfectly. So we can see there's consolidation in here on Euro. We don't have to really go through a whole lot with this, this pair if you break it down into a hourly chart. And compress this a little bit. You can see while we are drifting with the strength in the dollar lower, it's still consolidated and not really expanding on the downside. In other words, there's not a lot of momentum for this pair euro dollar to you know, cross a lot of ground on a bearish price swing. So we did take out equal, relative equal lows. We did sweep through that. It just hasn't had a lot of expansion on the downside. If we look at the cable market in relationship to what we've seen here, there's a stark contrast. Right away, you can see that this market has a lot more symmetry. That means the price action is much easier to read. It's much more explosive. It wants to reach down for lower price objectives. And I'm gonna show you this magnified and we'll zoom in a little bit. All right, so here's Friday's price action. 
and I'm showing Friday's high and Friday's low and splitting that range in half. So if we're going to be bearish, the best sell scenarios are going to be in the lower half of that range or that Friday's daily range. You can see we trade here on this candle. It's 4 a.m. New York time. So that's the London open kill zone. You all are familiar with that if you've been studying my content on this channel. Up close candle here. That's your bearish order block. Price trades up into that, closed in the imbalance, trades to this candle's low. What's that low? 132.38 and one pipette. And the high on this candle comes in at 132.38 and seven pipettes. So 38.7, 38.1. So it went six pipettes a little bit further than it needs to just to trade into this candle, creating the high in the London session and price breaks down and then we start to consolidate. Now we are in a long period of consolidation in here, but look where it's staying. Okay, it's staying below the previous day's low and the next trading day starts here at midnight on the 8th of September and the high forms, where does it form? Does it cross over the Monday's 50% of the daily range? No. So the short forms in the lower half of the previous day's range, which is Monday's trading, and again in London Open, two o'clock in the morning, New York time, creates the high in London, and then we sell off aggressively. And then during this period here, that little shaded box, that is the 8.30 to 11 o'clock New York trade session I taught for the YouTube channel. Now there is a New York session kill zone, okay, and or New York Open kill zone, then if you watch my tutorials here, you learn about that. But this specific opportunity is limited to 8.30 in the morning to 11 o'clock in the morning. So it really refines it to a time window where you can literally open up shop and that would be your, your operating time for trading. Only focusing on the New York session. Not having to worry about trading London. Not having to worry about trading um, Asia. Nothing doing in uh, London close or even late New York sessions. This is a very short window of opportunity that gives you a lot of potential trades. So if we look at this on a 15 minute time frame, you can see the 15 minute time frame again, very clean price action, lots of expansion down. We create this retracement here ahead of New York open. This low forms at 9.30, so there's your dealing range. You have the low and the high here. So that's your optimal trade entry. You would pull your fib across that and it takes you right up into optimal trade entry right here during the 8.30 to 11 o'clock in the morning time frame. And then you it can expect price to trade lower. This line right here, I'll take you out into a daily chart and show you what that is, but it's just a liquidity pull, very easy, obvious level to reach for using higher time frame price action. So now if we look at how price has delivered, on cable in relationship to everything I've shown so far, which is bullish dollar, looking at the economic calendar to determine is there any clues to which pair of a closely correlated group of markets, for instance, euro and pound, they're very, very correlated. They're highly correlated. So when they trend higher, they usually tend to trend together. But there's times when that won't happen. There's a crack in that correlation. So by using the economic calendar first to determine is there any real heavy hitting news for one currency over another, and then you study price action when the new week starts, which one's having a lot of struggle to go in the direction that the dollar index implies. So if we're bullish on dollar, that means euro dollar should go lower, cable or pound dollar should go lower. But if we see bullishness on Euro pound, then we go through the scenario as I outlined in the beginning of this video, looking for which one is likely to occur in terms of scenario. As you can see here, cable has led on the downside and we're gonna look at this little portion of price action right there. I'll add the FIB. So you can see without having to trade the London session, not that there's anything wrong with trading the London session because it's, to me, it's the biggest opportunity for the day. 
you don't need the biggest opportunity. You can do New York session trading every single trading session and do very, very well because you have the advantage of knowing what London did. And this actually didn't go where I wanted it to. There you go, right there. All right, so I'll zoom in here and let you take a look at what Cable did. So here's that range, the high to the low with the 79% tracement level, trading up into it here. And yes, we consolidate a little bit before breaking down. If recall in the last few videos I've been talking about, this is the reason why I am never in a hurry to you know, move my stop loss because this is what can happen. The algorithm can keep price in a range longer than it's comfortable for you to stay in the trade or without moving your stop. See, the first impulse you have as a retail trader is I want to protect my open profits and I don't want to get a loss. I don't want to have a losing trade. And that's one of the things you're going to have to grow into allowing happening. It's it, You're going to lose. You're going to have a stop out. There's nothing wrong with that. I stop out of trades. Sometimes the trade doesn't work for me and it runs right to my stop when I first get in. I'm not infallible. You're not going to be infallible. So it's important to welcome that in your development because you learn a whole lot about doing it wrong in the beginning. But some of you, well, really most of you, are trying to avoid that uncomfortable period of struggling and fumbling and just not knowing what you're doing. So if you can just allow yourself and give yourself permission to make mistakes in a demo where you're not hurting yourself financially and you're not really scoring or measuring up you know, to whether or not you're making money in a demo account or not. The first objective is to not show a huge drawdown. Okay. If you can go back and forth, you know, make a little, give it back, make a little and not really make money or not make a, a huge decline in the equity for your demo. That's actually very good. That's a good goal to have initially. Try to aim for break even because most traders, when they first start, they have no ability to trade like that. It's always like a train wreck where it just completely blows out the account and you have to reset and restart a new demo. You don't want to learn those lessons with a live account. The only thing it's going to do is teach you to be fearful of trading and there should be no apprehension no uh, reluctance no uh, fear or uncertainty about why you're putting the trade on and using a hard stop not a mental stop a pretend stop if it goes here I'll get out those never work okay they always do more damage than they help so by looking at the things I've taught you on this YouTube channel using the concept that I just walked you through here you can clearly see that everything still works we have the range optimal trade entry this candle is the highest one in here and it's still 10 o'clock in the morning you have until 11 o'clock to find the setup and the 11 o'clock hour is here so it's this candle right there so you have that range from here to here it retraces and then you let it go stop above here and you just let it trade it's going around sideways 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 does it break this low yet no it doesn't break that low until this candle then and only then would you be considering moving your stop but not before then because you have to give the market time to gyrate and move around and then leave the dealing range see the problem with most traders is that they look at these candles and they attribute much more significance to them than they really have the algorithm trades on time and price okay not price and time it's time and price so the most significant factor is the element of time the algorithm can stay in a predetermined range longer than traders are comfortable holding and this entire time it stays within this low and this high all kinds of ideas have changed from being bullish to bearish, trade has been put on, trades have been taken off, trades have been stopped out, moving them too tight because most people do not know how to trade. So looking at this example here and then thinking about how you've seen live examples where I'm executing and entering and managing the trade, this is the reason why I do not rush to move my stop loss because I understand this component in price action. It can stay in a range or a consolidation before moving into my expected 
you know, move below this low here, and then we would see it reach below this low here. The blue line, I promise you I would tell you what that is. Let's go out to a daily chart. And let's take this off for a moment. Daily. Okay. And you can see this low right there. You see that? So we have this low all up to here. So this is the dealing range we've been working on the daily chart. So liquidity rests below that low. And I'll add the annotations back on and you'll see it. There's that low, that blue line, and it's trades down into it and below it. All right. So I'm certainly not saying that's the actual end of the move. I'm not implying that at all. I'm just saying that that was a level that you could reasonably expect to see it draw to. All right. So, all right. So hopefully you've got something out of this. Uh, a lot of things I've provided here. If it went over your head, I promise if you've spent more time in the tutorials on this YouTube channel, it'll fill in the gaps. Not all the gaps, it won't fill in everything, but it will give you a greater understanding about why these pairs do what they do and how they use the crosses to find the explosive price action moves. Until I talk to you next time, I wish you good luck and good trading.